Dane Young and Brent Rollins joined by David Pollock. And uh, David, I, I'm told that Brent here did a little working out earlier today. And- he got swole. Be- he beat me in the competition, that's for sure. We did a little uh, – we showed up and I was like, dude, it is Africa hot, so let's take this puppy outside. It felt good to – do a little running outside, a little farmer's walk, a little bike outside, a little row outside. It was it was outstanding. But Brent Wallace, is a, it, Brent Wallace is a stud in, in every way, shape, or form. It's just it's just the truth. He's clip, a five star. He's a five star. Clip that. There we go. No. I mean, can you give me a scouting report? Because like I've never worked out with him. I, I mean, I'd like to know what, what's in his repertoire here. Well, Dan, let's put it this way. If you played him in basketball, he beat you. If you played him in pickleball, he beat you. If you played him in golf, he beat you. Like, whatever you played against him, he beat you. So Golf? I don't know about golf. They might get pretty, me in golf. He, he might get you in golf. Well, that's a pretty good – like, he's Brent's good at everything. He's always been good at everything. He's strong. Got that, got that strong upper body, that strong base. He's built – you know, he ain't real tall, so I, I will give him that. He's, he, he might not have been a five-star because of the height, but everywhere else – Solid. You, you and I have those T Rex arms that allow us to be good at the bench press. Oh, it's beautiful! Just ee, 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 just rack <laughs> breath them out. So, he, Brent, uh, I've done a lot of things with Brent. There's nothing he's not really good at. See, I'm sticking with those country club sports, the the tennis, the golf, like that tends to be my. I get you on the tennis court, Brent. I feel good about that. Yeah, I would probably so. I can hit with both hands though, so maybe that that would be. Ooh. Yeah, he's amphibious. You know, he's good with both hands. <laughs> Uh, mainly I wanted to bring you on because uh, this can be a North Oconee Titans podcast. So uh, how about them North Oconee Titans? What's up in that world? Oh, it's dope, man. It was really fun to uh, to smack it to Oconee a couple weeks ago or whenever it was a week ago. Dang, it's been, it hasn't been that long. Um, no, nah, it's been cool, man. They gave me a headset this year, which is which Brent knows I'm going to be infinitely more annoying now. Um, just uh, listening in and uh, it's been fun, man. We got a good squad and it's been it's been fun to be a, a small part of it with the kiddos up there. We got some kids that work their tails off, and they're smart kids. They're good kids, and I'm excited about this season. We got a chance to to do something special and maybe go win a state championship. So we're definitely we're definitely fired up. I thought about you earlier about two weeks ago because my oldest daughter started kindergarten at Rocky Branch this year, and when we're walking through for the meet the teacher. I see a kid and he's wearing a Pollock Family Foundation shirt on Meet the Teacher Day. And I'm like, all right, I, I see what this school's all about. That's what I'm talking. We're recruiting, baby. We start recruiting at a young age for volunteers, baby. <laughs> Just getting them, getting them all. All our friends, man, we give them out a ton at the golf tournament. And we have so many people that thankfully just come and volunteer. And and then you get to see all the football players. Cause it's funny, the North Oconee, you know, the high school kids up there, they a lot of them kids have been with my son for a long time and they volunteer and, you know, you have to wear red one day, you have to wear black one day. And we've had red, we've had black shirts for the past, you know, seven, eight years of doing it. So they, they, they'll, they'll rock the different shirts. I always love seeing them. Well, obviously we're here to, you know, it's college football is upon us week zero. Like, I, I don't get that, but okay. It's, it's there, there, there are games. <laughs> Nobody on. ever gets that. Nobody ever gets that. It's okay. So their games on. So like, just how excited are you about getting back to actual football being on television again and seeing it? Uh, I'm excited. I, I wasn't, I don't necessarily get overly excited this time of year. Um, Cause you kind of get so busy. You don't pay attention to much and especially doing high school football now, you know, full time. But Nicholas had on the 25 greatest games from last year on yesterday. or And, oh, man, I was like, yeah. I watched an LSU and Alabama from last year, TCU and Kansas State from last year. And I'm like, yeah, I was there. I remember that. I remember this. I remember this. And, um, dude, it's just, it's just fun to see. It's, it's fun to see the, the trend, to see what will happen, man. I mean, Georgia obviously going for a historic three-peat. Um, Ohio State and Alabama breaking in quarterbacks. The LSU Alabama thing, I think, is going to be fun to watch in the West because I see a lot of people thinking Alabama just kind of returns to to dominance. I like LSU in the West. I think Jay, watching that game again the other night, actually, I think Jaden Daniels is he's special, man. The, the the progress he showed from week one to the last. So I I, I get excited um, just like everybody else. I, I'm excited to start some new Saturday traditions with the, with the family and. <laughs> I'm excited to go to some Georgia games. I don't get to do that very often. Thank goodness we've been so good the last several years that we've got to host game day, and I've got to go to several games like that. But uh, excited to be a little bit more free in the fall. 
you spoke on your family goals podcast just about everything that kind of happened over the summer and, and you say your Saturdays are opening up. Um, do you know what your Saturdays look like? Or are you just going to define that each day as you go? Like, what are your Saturday plans right now? Whatever I want them to be. And it's glorious. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm like, listen, there ain't no way in heck that we ain't going to be watching football in our household. Like we're going to be watching it. I'm going to be studying it. Like, I was telling Brent earlier today we were, when we were working out, and I was just like, man, those games come on, and I don't have a choice. And Brent's wired the same way. Like, I, I'm just analytical with football. Like, I watch it, and I don't – I'm not watching it to be, like, entertained. I'm watching it to figure out strategy and, oh, what kind of defense are they in? What kind of offense are they in? Like, oh, I'll do this. I like this. I'm like, oh, that'd be a great take. Yeah, maybe I'll show it on game. Day. Oh, nope, you're fired. Oh, um, so, like, I, I think uh, create some traditions. I told Nicholas I'd love to – me and him could go to some places in the Southeast, maybe and play some different golf courses and um, start our own, you know, kind of Saturday traditions. But I mean, listen, dude, the, the games will be on. Um, definitely will be watching. It's the, it's the most glorious time of the year. I mean, it's just so much fun for everybody because no matter what you do in the off season, and, and I know, you know, Brent's a, a baseball geek and likes the Braves and that stuff. And that ain't me unless I need a nap. Um, not watching a baseball game if I if I can help it, but I'm I'm dialed into football games and dialed into just about anyone you put on TV. So we're gonna get a ton of football Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, Sunday, Monday, whatever. Um, especially college football to start the season, you kind of get inundated, and it is it's so much fun to watch it and be a part of it. Hey, and now we actually have good enough internet out here that we can stream. Like the Amazon game on Thursday night, like we can actually watch it. <laughs> yeah, it was, dude, I was so excited when, when we got our internet last year. I'm like, dude, I can do so much TV from home. Oh, wait. <laughs> but but still, but still being able to, you know, to do podcasts and not have to be like, take the, the 30 second delay half the time and be able to answer questions. Yeah, it's definitely nice living in the sticks, you know, but being able, being able to get some good internet. I'm glad that there's technical folks like y'all that watch the game, though, because it makes it where I can do my little jokey comedy thing of just like, hey, there's Darnell Washington. He's big. Run that way. <laughs> I Listen, I envy people that can do that, but I can't watch a 6 u game without thinking like that. Like, I, I don't I, – I, I can't I, – I, I, my daughter just started volleyball, and, and I don't know a daggum thing about volleyball, but I'm watching, you know, our game the other day, and I'm like, why do we line up like this? Like, what – Every time they're tipping it over the girls that we go to block and, and we don't have anybody behind them. Who's supposed to be behind them? How does this thing work? Like, it's it's always a puzzle. And that's the that's the fun part about, like, any kind of sport. Like, th there's a winner and a loser. And if you don't pay attention and you don't learn how to strategy and learn how to do things, like, you're going to be the loser. And, and so that, that's always, I think, the most, you know, fascinating part about any level of a sport or anything. It's always like, how do they do it? Why do they do it that way? Why can't we do it this way? Can th that might work better. And um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't have that ability. That good for you. God bless you that you get to relax and and enjoy it. Well, so speaking of the the winning and losing part, obviously there's been a lot of winning done uh, on the Georgia side in the past few years. Looking ahead to this year, do you feel like it's if you had to pick Georgia versus the field? How are you feeling about that that pick? I'll always take the field. I mean, I, I don't care who it is. Um, just because I think that there's – you, you got to get fortunate along the way, man. I mean, just a lot of things have to happen for you to win a national championship. And you got to stay healthy at the major positions and the core positions, and especially the quarterback spot that goes into it. But but I definitely think Georgia's the favorite. And, and that's just stupid to say again. Like, last year we did the same thing because here we go, here we go again. You go, okay – Tons of NFL talent you saw leave and go to the draft. Well, how are you going to replace that? Well, we've seen that done before. Well, we also you also got Bowers coming back, and you got McConkey coming back, and you got the interior of the offensive line coming back, and you got your linebackers, you know, coming back. You you see, oh, that Michael Williams guy, he's a freak. He's going to be pretty good. Like, I mean, you you just start to see and you start to trust the recruiting and what they've been able to build. And listen, the, the thing is, you know, we don't have a bunch of guys going to the portals. You know, we don't we don't have we're not dipping in the portal a lot like the people that hang around and, and, and understand it. Like when you go see the culture of what Kirby's built, like you want to be there like you want to. Let me rephrase that. The people that are high achievers want to be there. Carson Beck's still there for a reason. A lot of guys would have been like, peace, I'm gone. I want to go play. Carson Beck's like, wait a minute. 
this gives me the best chance to be the best version of me. This gives me a chance to grind every day. This gives me a chance to make gazillions in the future because like you can be Bear Alexander if you want. I'll use him as an example. And you can go take the money and you can take the short term money from USC, which which is fine. You're going to go, if you've watched USC defensive line football, you ain't going to get developed. You're going to slant 85% of the time. Like, okay, congratulations. Like, what you're going to pass up is Jalen Carter's contract. You know, like, so I think the, the, trust, the trust level is so high. The maturation of Kirby from, from what he was several years ago, three or four years ago, to what he is now, Kirby always had scheme. Curry's, Kirby always had discipline. Kirby always had toughness. Kirby finally understood now togetherness. That's what's changed with Kirby. Kirby's understood how to now take kids and care about them, get them off campus, get them away from football, let them know how much he cares about them, figure, get into their lives, figure them out, like figure out what makes them tick. Um, always been an elite recruiter, but I, I think now you've seen somebody grow into himself even more. He's comfortable with himself. He's a dog. I mean, I can let me tell you this. He ain't watching a game to enjoy it, Dane. Like he's watching <laughs> a game to put the pieces together to smash you in the face with a frying pan. Like whatever the game is. So it's fun as a Georgia fan to sit back and look where they're at. So the field part. Who who do you now obviously we've talked we kind of know that these traditional powers, the Alabama, Ohio State, they're breaking in new quarterbacks. But who do you look at as maybe someone that's not them that r- takes a step up? Does Texas do that? Does Dan Lanning in year two do that? Like, or is it still going to be those traditional powers? You think in the end, it, it, it's going to be those traditional powers. But there's no way I'm not saying LSU. Like LSU is clearly um, is clearly next it, to me is the next biggest threat. Um, when I look at LSU, playmakers Palooza always. The best defensive player in college football is going to be Harold Perkins Jr. Like, you will watch him and go, oh, my gosh, that is a freak. Like, there are certain guys you create on video games that you go, yeah, I create him with 99 speed and he runs faster than everybody else. Like, Harold Perkins is that guy. Now, listen, he hasn't learned the mechanics of being great against the run yet, and I'd run at him every play. I would literally line up and run at him every single play. But you're talking about a guy that, like, can run things down and – can uh, can already bend and dip and ghost rush and like it's hard not to look at him and go Vaughn Miller and th- and then you look at the other side and you know you've got playmakers you got an offensive line they started freshman tackles last year they thought we were going to grow into this develop second year in the system Brian Kelly highly recruited class you blend that with the transfers you blend that with Jaden Daniels who's by the way he's second in the Heisman you know odds for a reason like Jaden went from a guy that was. By the way, I said this on game day, his true freshman year at Arizona State. I said, not only is Jaden Daniels good, he's got Heisman potential good, like New York City good, because New York City good, because you could see, like, he wanted to throw first, but when he took off, now listen, he was 107 pounds soaking wet. Let me get, I mean, he needed to get in the weight room and get some curls in for sure. But like, once he did and he built his body up, once then, he started to learn last year to go through his progressions. I mean, he lit Georgia up in the SEC championship game. I, I know everybody remembers that. I know Kirby does. Like, um, So I, I think LSU clearly is the next biggest threat with – now, listen, Alabama's Alabama. Ohio State's Ohio State. Michigan is Michigan, by the way. They've kind of proven to this point now, too. It's the same formula. Like, they've got a freak every year that's on Bruce Feldman's list. You know, they're always – they've always got a next guy up and – um, I think their offense always gives me room to pause, and I don't think McCarthy's that dude. I just don't. I, I haven't seen enough to think he's that dude yet. But those other teams, it, it's the most talented teams. Like, we can talk about it however you want. There's a reason those teams are at the top of the polls every year. And it, and it has – listen, in the end, it's a beauty contest of who gets into the Final Four. That's just the way football works. Like, are you a, are you a legs guy or are you a, are you a base guy or are you a – you know, it's just what 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 kind of makes you t- – it's not most deserving. Like, it's not the best teams usually. It's – or it's not – excuse me, it's the most deserving teams. It's not always the best. The best teams are always – right now have been those teams at the top, and that's not changing. So, with Alabama specifically, this is one sort of thought that I had. Like, for if I th- looked at Alabama this season and said, okay, Bill O'Brien's still their offensive coordinator, I think they might lose four or five games. Pull the ripcord, quit. With Reese there, now do you feel like that gives them more of a chance from an identity standpoint? 
A hundred percent. And an identity, I think, that needs to be built with what they have. Because if you watched Alabama last year, Bryce Young proved he was the best player in college football, probably. I, I, I would debate that with you. He drug Alabama's offense week in and week out, making superhuman plays that were incredible. Running game was okay. Offensive line was okay. Receivers, very okay. You know, there, there was definitely – there was definitely not any receivers that I drooled at on their roster by any stretch of the imagination, and he, and he carried them week in and week out. Now, Gibbs was sweet, and he looked sweet, and the way he played was sweet. Um, but but Tommy Reese is, is really good. I, I've talked to Tommy a bunch on the phone and, and love his, his personality. Like, Brent, he's a, he's, a, he's a thinker. He's a grinder. Like, he's got that – He's got that screw you. Like, he's got that little mentality to him. I think he'll be a head coach one day. He's got an edge to him. But but if you – well, one thing – there's two things consistent that I love about Tommy, and I made a tape on this last year, is preseason or, or pre-snap motion shifts that lead to flooding of zones and understanding what the defense is in. Like, when they line up, they are going to have a purposeful route in there to take the eyes of the safety to now bring somebody else underneath in zone coverage. They're going to they're, – they're, everything is done with intent. And if I'm an Alabama fan, the next thing I see when I watch the Tommy Reese offense from a year ago is everything starts downhill. They're running backs. You can say off tackle if you want. They are downhill with a running, running game downhill with a purpose. Alabama's personnel this year – I don't think they're going to be great at quarterback. I don't think they're going to be near Ohio State, LSU, Georgia. I don't think they're going to be as good as Michigan at quarterback. So they better be able to run the football. I think Jalen Milrow and his freaky athletic ability could be a problem in an offense like that that can shift in motion, make things easy, get a downhill running game where now he can pull it and run. Um, but, man, I, I'm not – I'm not in the Alabama world yet where I'm saying, dude, they're in the tournament. They're in the, they're in the dance. Like I think they've got a lot to prove this season to, for me to go, they're a team that I'm just going to count in the playoffs. Like you've typically done in the past. It seems like in the playoffs, the last couple of years, there's been one surprise team that sneaks in there that preseason, you never would have seen it coming, whether it's TCU last year, Cincinnati, a couple of years ago, is there a team that you look out there and say, I, I could see them making a, a run on this. It takes some things falling right for them, but I could see it happening. I could see Washington being that team. Um, you know, I love, I love their offense. Penix junior last year, you could tell that just to, just talent wise, you, if you watch Penix junior throw a football, you go, Hmm, that's different. And I would say Joe Milton's probably the freakiest. Like he just – he could say – you could ask him to throw it over the mountain and he could probably do it. Um, but Penix, just the way it just zips out of his hand, it's got so much juice on it. Um, and you look at playmakers with Washington, um, a system now in place for a couple of years. I think Washington could be a team that kind of sneaks from off the radar because LSU doesn't count. They're very much, you know, on the radar – um, I think Dan's going to continue to kill it at Oregon. I just I think he's he, he's recruited. You can see his imprint on the way they play defense and their physicality, and you can see Bo Nix go from here to here. And, and, I, and I tweeted it a year ago, and and bef- made, I made sure I jumped out in front, and, and people told me I was an idiot. But like Bo Nix is a first round pick. I want you to let that sink in. It sounds stupid, but if you really do a dive into his tape and you watch him play football. Like Bo Nix with a good coach a year ago was like ding, 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 play make and make a play. And I was like, that's different. Like he he knew his answers. He had his answers. He had a little bit more pressure. Now, Den- Dillingham went to Arizona State to take the head job, which I- I'll be interested. He's got another new system, which sucks for that kid. I hate that for him. Um, but I was impressed with him. So those Pac-12 teams, listen, Texas, it- it's it's just – I'm not in it. I- I'm not in it. And, and, and listen – I might get burned, but – and I know some people went to Texas practice and, oh, the five stars are beautiful and the money <laughs> they're spending is beautiful. That's great, bro, but show me. Like, there there was nothing – There, do you think TCU was more talented than Texas? No. Let me answer that. Hell no. Like, hell no. No way. Like – um, but something, something, something's been missing with Texas, and and, and Quinn Ears is, is phenomenal, man. He, 
you, you we talked about Michael Penix Jr. You talk about Joe Milton. Like Quinn Ewers is not getting out of the top five when it comes to talent across the country. Um, but man, he drives me nuts because his footwork is so daggum lazy. Like it's so blase fair. That might be his personality, but he, he's the guy you watch rip it in warm ups and you're like, ooh, who, who? And then Kind of like me on the golf course. You watch me in the range, and you're like, ooh, sweet, knocking the piss out of it. Then you go on the course, and you're like, what the heck happened? Like, why did, why are we doing this now? So, I mean, I just um, – I'm not ready to buy buy Texas yet and go all in Texas. Well, what's interesting is that, you know, this is the final – the year that we get a Final Four, a last sort of Final Four, and then everything goes into a weirdness uh, after that. So, it – given the traditional powers with all that, it will be interesting to see who actually makes that final four. So how is that golf game, by the way, if you get, getting a little better at the golf game? It's growing. It's growing. The, the beauty of being fired um, is, is gorgeous. It's, it's a lot more time on the course. Uh, first of all, I have a couple rules and Brent already knows this. I am not getting in a cart. You will, you are not getting me in a cart. That's bull crap. Cause my score at the end of every round is going to be at least four and a half miles. That's if you play nine, it's four and a half. You play 18, obviously, it's a lot more, and it's even more sweat this time of year. Um, but I shot, a, I shot a smooth 39 the other day. I can't, still can't, still can't play 18 yet, bro. I don't, I don't have that in me. I don't have the 18 holes, the mental capacity. But got a new driver, got a new tailor made driver the other day. I'm looking forward to hitting the, the stealth two and dropping some bombs. But it's, uh, it's coming along. It's coming along nicely. So obviously, also you you talked about on the Family Goals podcast, and we're going to put the link. By the way, for those of you who are watching, the link will be in the bo- the bottom of the, the description of the page. So click on that, go listen, go subscribe to that podcast. Listen, uh, something comes out every Monday, right? Is that yes, sir? Yeah, every, every Monday. Monday. Uh, but you talked about that. So what else with the speaking? And you mentioned that with the speaking and some of the speaking you're doing. What is some of the things coming up this fall uh, from a speaking perspective? Uh, I'm doing a lot of speaking, that's for sure. Um, speaking in Warner Robins, uh, I'm speaking in South Dakota, speaking to uh, Liberty University, which is going to be sweet. Is that Talk about heart racing. It's going to be 9,000 kids in an auditorium, which will be, which will be different. But um, definitely had a, a bunch of things coming up on the speaking front. Uh, spoke in Florida, spoke in Georgia, spoke in Alabama. And it's been, it's been really, really fun. Honestly, I, I've, I've loved it from that standpoint because I've gotten – I mean, you get a lot of feedback in speaking and, you know, being able to reach kids, being able to touch kids, being able to speak to companies, organizations, kind of share your story um, and, and hopefully use it as a motivating force for, for people. Because I, I think I think naturally people always look at you and they go, oh, game day. Well, that, that was easy. Like, he's had a great life. I'm like, bro, let me tell you about some stuff that sucked. Oh, first round pick. Well, let me tell you about a broken neck. Like, oh, three time All-American. Well, let me tell you about a three star kid that played three positions in seven months on campus, you know? So being able to share my story and stuff has been really, really cool. And I, I look forward like crazy to doing that this fall and, and coaching some high school football. And listen, you, you know me, Brent, I ain't, there ain't no way in heck I'm not going to be all up in college football and watching tape and watching the all 22. And I'm going to be posting it on Twitter and I'm going to be posting who's doing good and who's not doing good. And it's kind of fun because nobody can hate on me. It's awesome. I can just, I can say what, what I want to say and how I want to say it. Um, and then you can give, it. Well, you can give that occasional reply to the person who hates on you. You get the great, like great replies on Twitter. Very good job by you. On oh, of those. yeah. There's, oh, I love those. I love the. I always love the hate equally as much or if not more than the, than the, than the praise. I think it was better actually. I like, I like the creativity, but uh, definitely a, a lifestyle change, man. But uh, just like anything else, dude, like life's going to throw us all curves and we're going to have things that, that don't go our way. But man, is it fun to, to watch God work and to watch him do things in the moments of ups, you know, that you're feeling good and the moments of downs that that take you down a different road that you never might thought you might would have gone down. But you're like, this is awesome. You know, thank you. Thank you for this. And, and thank you for taking me through it. It's cool to see the other things in your world that you even lean more into now when this thing happened, because now like you've already been doing your family goals podcast and you get to kind of lean into that harder and do even more speaking. You've been repping the Titans on ESPN stuff for years now. Uh, Dang Skippy, bro. Now, now North Oconee is a national brand because I mean, not just because you they make it to the state semis every year, it seems like. So we got, we got to get a title for him. Uh, we, we got to get over Yeah, We got to get over that bull crap. The semis ain't good enough. We, we got to fix that this year. We're going to, we're going to do something a little bit better. That's not good enough. 
<laughs> well, we'll recap the North Oconee season uh, with you later at some point. How about that? Okay. And <laughs> that and, and preview the college football playoff because that's going to be about the same time. Sweet. We'll do that. Boom. Let's get it cool. done. David, well, thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate thanks so much. it. And for those of you who are listening and to the end, click the link, go subscribe to the Family Bowl Goals podcast and also, you know, this UGA Sports YouTube channel. Cause, and also, if you hey, if you really want to break down tape, like stay up Sunday night with Dana and I, and, you know, we can, you can hop on and break down some tape. Dang, Skippy. Brent, Brent, Brent knows his stuff. I can promise you that. <laughs> I tell jokes and it works out. <laughs> <laughs>